Today's gospel, the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, is taken from chapter 10 of Matthew. It's verses 26 through 33. But that whole chapter is known as the Apostolic Discourse. Jesus chooses the 12, and in choosing them, sends them out. That's precisely what the word apostle means, one who is sent. In the text today, Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, bear witness fearlessly, with open and fearless speech. Now I'd like to approach this text through what I believe to be a universal human reality. That to be human, to be who and what you are, is in fact to bear witness to bear witness to humanity, to the best possibilities. To be a good human being is in fact a matter of witnessing. When human beings are less than human, they are also less than brutes. By way of contrast, when we live our humanity honestly and well, we bear witness to something that is inspiring, that is good. And this is the privilege and the responsibility of us all, believers or non-believers alike. This witnessing that is part of being human takes a specific shape for those of us baptized into Christ, those of us who would be disciples of Jesus. St. Paul prays a beautiful prayer in chapter 3 of his letter to the Christians in Ephesus, which suggests that he wants to support those disciples there in their witnessing to Jesus. St. Paul writes, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. This echoes St. Paul chapter 8 verse 16. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit bear united witness that you are God's child and you cry out, Abba, dear Father. When we begin to awaken to this reality, when we begin to relax into who and what we are, and stop pretending, living by idealized images, deceits, hiding behind masks, etc. We all do it. We'll never be entirely free of that. Life is a graced emergence from that. And when we awaken to who and what we are as baptized into Christ, there is a dawning realization and St. Paul, again, expresses that well in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 35. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? There's deep conviction there, which gives rise to an open and fearless presence in the world. There's a name for this freedom and boldness that emerges when we begin to know who and what we are and relax into that identity. The Greek word is parhesia, P-A-R-R-H-E-S-I-A, -E parhesia. The meaning of this word is difficult to catch in English, actually, but it is along the lines of freedom and boldness. Catechism of the Catholic Church speaks of it in this way. This power of the Spirit who introduces us 
to the Lord's Prayer is expressed in the liturgies of East and of West by the beautiful, characteristically Christian expression pa hesia. Straightforward simplicity, filial trust, joyous assurance, humble boldness, and the certainty of being loved. Now, in fact, the word parhesia was well known in ancient Greece and it emphasized a bold and forthright expression of one's views as honestly as one could do it. Something quite specific is added, however, in the Christian dispensation. And it appears in the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures. There's a lovely passage which introduces us to the mystery of Parhasia as it will come to be known in that Christian dispensation. In the book of Leviticus, chapters 26, verse 13, we read, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be their slaves no more. I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. That word in English, erect. The Greek is parhesia. Walk in the world with confidence, with boldness, with freedom, with filial trust. Parhesia, because you are God's chosen ones. God is with you. Who can be against you? St. Paul's prayer for the Christians in Ephesus, which we cited earlier, when it bears fruit in us, when we relax into who and what we are, stop the pretending, the clinging, the controlling, the compulsiveness, the moralism, the thinking that we can perform for God and God will reward us if we do that. God has already blessed us in creating us and God blessed us mightily in baptism. So we are one in Christ. That's who and what I am, who and what you are. To realize that, to awaken to that, is really at the heart of being a Christian in the world. And so St. Paul writes in chapter 4, verse 15 of his letter to the same Christian community in Ephesus, to speak the truth in love. You'll be able to do that when you know that you are loved by Christ, that you do not need to fear, that you enjoy the freedom of the children of God. This is not uh, an aggressive, attacking, self-righteous speaking, as if speaking the truth in love meant pulling others into line. Truth heals. Truth emerges from love and begets love. In that sense, it's the most simple, and the most challenging of concepts. In some 50 years in religious life, I would say that is the most challenging thing of being in relationships, of being in community. The willingness and the capacity to speak the truth in love. It is grounded in the awakening, the realization, I don't need to compete. I don't need to prove myself. I don't need to fit in other people's expectations. I'm blessed by God. I'm loved by God, infinitely, no matter what. St. Paul continues, we will grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth and building itself up in love. 